what is going on everybody it is me your boy flash jones back again with another video and in this one folks we're taking a look at these scale trains operator cold pours so with all that being said let's go ahead and jump right on in to this video all right guys so first things first Let's go ahead and unbox one of these. And of course, we're gonna unbox my favorite BNSF crosshatch logo and the operator here. Gonna get this guy out. Now, inside the box, get a little exploded parts diagram, with some information on the car. Well, I'm sorry, maybe no exploded parts. Maybe you do get exploded parts, yeah. Open this guy up. Get your exploded parts diagram here. So in case you need something, you want to build one from scratch. That's essentially all that is in there. On the front of that, of course, is your, your car history, essentially. And then the parts, part numbers and whatnot, warranty information, typical stuff. Follow that to the side. Cool. Okay, next. We have the car, of course. So, very simple, little uh, plastic top, soft plastic protecting the model inside the packaging, and voila, this is what we have. There we go. So, got this guy out of the packaging. Let's go ahead and set him down. We're gonna unbox the other BN one, and we'll take a look at a couple others, but this one and possibly the BN is the main tour that we're going to focus the review on. Of course, like I said, taking a look at the other models that I have. Before we get too far into this, I'll take a quick look at Scale Trends website here. This is, of course, like I said, their website, as you see there at the top left corner, scaletrains.com. Um, of course, this is the car itself the car that we are reviewing right here at this moment. Some of the same information that you saw there on the uh, exploded parts diagram uh, paper that folded out their pricing. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, which today is the 17th, I'm sorry, the 18th of September. So at this point in time, um, you're not gonna be able to buy it, at least not this version. Um, I wanna say here, or yet, we'll, we'll go to that in a second. Looking here, you get some product history so a lot of what you've seen there on that uh, paper that came with the box and then some more prototype history there so real quick I want to say I looked at one of these here just a second ago and it wasn't stock maybe it was this version yeah so as the 18th of September you can get a handful of them depending on which one you want. Now, you're gonna have to go to the website and look for yourself. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time here looking at this website. Um, if you want some, you're gonna have to go uh, digging for them or try to find a local hobby shop that's got these. Um, but back to the review. So before we get too far into this also, I did wanna mention that I did pick up the coal load. Just only this pack because whenever I get my layout actually fully functioning and running, we actually will be using real, <laughs> real simulated coal. Um, it won't be these types of loads. It'll be an actual load of coal. It'll be filled with some sort of uh, play coal in my hoppers or in my porters, I should say. And um, they won't be this just capping of coal to simulate coal. It'll actually be filled with black uh particles of some of some nature we'll find something to load them up with but it will be filled with some sort of coal not just these but i did buy these just to show what they look like okay okay folks so here we are got our car okay so looking here at the b end you have your brake wheel you have your non scale trains proprietary coupler this is just the normal coupler that they slap on through the operator um series cars you don't have any grab irons running up the sides of them you have just one stirrup on either corner of the car a and the bn 
Um, of course, no grabs running up the sides of the car because again, this is the operator version um, high brake wheel. That is, of course, of course, as also you see here, you have BNSF six, well, triple six, is it? No, you have the BNSF 668792. Of course, looking at the face, the side of this car. Some really nice rivet detail. As you guys can hear. Some nice rivet detail lining the side of the car. The car looks really nice. I'm sure you're able to see, but there's a really nice shine. There's a really nice shine that these cars have. Um, of course, not a whole lot of detail again because this is the operator. Looking down here towards the A end of the car, you do have the BNSF crosshatch logo, and we will zoom in a little bit here to get us some better looks at some of the details that are lining here. All right, so real quick, as you guys can see here, there are no roller bearing caps. So you guys kind of can see the wheel itself moving, the face of that wheel is moving but these roller bearing caps do not move. Give you a little bit of a close up on that. The roller bearing caps do not rotate on this operator version, which is a little sad because these are nice cars for their price point. Look at here just at the A end. So you have, this is the rotor coupler end, coupler end which is always designated on coal cars as whichever end has the most color or a stripe of some kind. And as you see on the far B end, there's nothing over here to signify that this is the rotary coupler end. Of course, it says it right there, but typically on coal cars, the side that has the most paint or the most color or a stripe or a certain patch uh, will typically be your rotary coupler end. Of course, it also said, but um, like I said, looking here at the A end, you have more of the BNSF uh, car name and car number. There's an AEI tag reader that's there. It's fairly tiny, but it's there. I'm oh, sorry, that's not an AEI tag. That is a defect, um, a defect card holder. Your AEI tag would typically run and be held on the frame of the car, somewhere down in here, so that it can be picked up by an AEI tag reader. Um, here's a stirrup here on this end. Okay, of course, no grabs on the side. Of course, there are no grabs here on the AN on this side either, but you do have road name, road number, of course, rotary coupling, and that other scale of trains, non proprietary specialty coupler, just their regular operator coupler, we'll call it. No coupler cut lever here. Okay, another stirrup here on this end. And you guys can kind of see down in here to the cage, not a whole lot going on in there. Look back here at the BN, and you do get some details down in here see if I can get it to a point where you can see down in there so this three so this may be your best look at what's inside the B end of this cage here you have your air tank reservoir and it looks a little dim in there just because it's not getting the much the most amount of light um, but it's not as dark as it appears to be on the camera down here it actually matches the same brown reddish oxide brown as a regular the the rest of the car but you do have that air reservoir your emergency side and your auxiliary air there we should be able to make out just a little bit there this little line right about there that's parallel with the car there's your piston and there is the brake beam thereafter coming out of that piston I'll try to see if I can get some photos of it and show it to you but that is the gist of this car it's a simple car okay it's a simple car with a simple price point designed to give you another piece of rolling stock on your layout so with all that being said one last look here at the bottom because i never showed you the bottom here is the bottom of the car very little to absolutely no detail here on the bottom of the car no brake rigging details no air brake pipe detail nothing of that sort so guys before we move on to final thoughts we're going to take a look at a couple other paint schemes that i did purchase this is the american power company or american electric power um all of the same detail okay only difference is this paint scheme so here is this one give it a quick once over
And as you guys can see, it still has that shine. Look at the B end here. See if we can't see some of that brake detail that's down in there. I was trying to show you earlier on that B end model. Yeah, you can see this one's a little bit better, a little bit more clear. You have that uh, air reservoir there. Yeah, maybe a little bit easier to see. Piston detail and the and the piston itself down in there. And then the beam that it presses up against to apply the pressure from the brake wheel. And even a little bit of chain detail that I couldn't see on the other model. So that's the American power, American electric power, I want to say. Now you guys can't see off camera, but these cars roll extremely well. Like I've, I've had to catch myself having to catch these cars before they roll off the table. Here's a look at UP. And my least favorite of all these is UP, just because I'm not a UP person. And there's not a lot of, there's not much of anything going on here with the UP. There's one little patch, and this is what I was talking about. This is that patch that tells you that this is the rotary end. So there's nothing here on the B end. How uh, on most cars, it seems like the rotating end is not on the B end. So here's your patch that tells you this is the rotary end. This is your B end. Nothing here on either side to tell you that this is the rotary end. But just this patch alone, this patch on this side, and that patch there tells you that this is the rotary end of the car. Because obviously it's not a bottom dump. It's got the tubes running along the bottom of it. There's the bottom, of course. B end. So... We'll slap him right next to the old American okay. Power. So company. one of the ones that some of you guys may definitely be wanting to take a look at. Now, you can get this model here in the operator or in the um, rivet counter, depending on what your, your preference is. Of course, I went with all operator models. Um, I'm not a Conrail modeler. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Conrail. Um, so this is not anything that I really want to model. I did pick this up, not just for the review, but also because... As all railroads do, they borrow cars from other um, companies, other railroads, and a lot of times you'll see UP cars running on the BN. You'll see CSX cars and NS cars, even engines and whatnot, running on other railroads, and especially BN. They use a lot of uh, lease power. So um, this will find itself uh, as a part of a junk train as we call them or dogs or just manifest trains as if you don't know that term so this will find itself part of the, one of the uh, consist of a, a fleet of of uh, manifest cars tanks boxes box cars and um, auto racks even a little bit of those but this is that conrail version as you guys can see here trucks are very very loose I have to obviously have to tighten that up here at some point because that's a lot of wobble that's about what a eighth of an inch at least of wobble on either on either side on both trucks. I'm sure they are gonna have some wobble. There are twenty bucks for these cars, twenty one if you get less than okay. six. And then of course, lastly but not least, the B N. So again, the most paint is on this side. This also has just a bit of a patch right here that tells you that this is the rotary end of the car which is also the A end of the car, but green and silver with, oh, stirrup on this side is a bit broken to wobbly, a little loose there. So be mindful of that. None of the other ones were like that. Like these ones aren't loose. This one isn't loose on here on this end. So definitely be mindful. I mean, it is all plastic, but you definitely want to still be careful with it. Yeah, see this one. Yeah, it's got that a lot of freedom in its trucks as well. So there are if I need a little bit of tightening. But uh, here's just a quick once over of this BN version. And like I said, this is one of the few that are remaining still. So if you did want some of these coal porters, this is one of the versions that still remains. 
So real quick, taking a look at this car with a collude. Again, this is the symmetrical collude. The offset looks it's about more risen on one side and lower. <clears throat> it's more it's higher on one end and it tapers down towards the other end of the car, depending on how you slap it in there. But the symmetrical load is completely level for the most part. It looks pretty doggone level to me. It may taper off just a touch, but it's fairly even on, on either end here of this car. All right, folks. So, like I said, moving on here to final thoughts. These cars are not the best. They're not the greatest. They don't have barely any detail except for the minimum mandatory detail we're going to call it but for $21 I don't really know what else you could expect now Skeletrans could have broken the norm and slapped on at least some roller bearing caps that would have been a nice little taste a nice little cherry on top um, but they didn't do that they could have given you better couplers but they didn't do that either um, no brake pipe detail no coupler cut lever detail um, no brake chain detail coming down um, from the brake the brake wheels going down into that piston no detail of that sort in any way but they didn't do that um, but yet it's $21 um, is, this, is their price if you get more than 6 or 6 or more rather it bumps down it drops down to $19.99 so 20 bucks. I want to say that I got about 15 of these give or take um, a lot of the BN version that's there in the back, mainly a lot of those, and then a couple of these BN ones. Um, but all in all, these cars for 20 bucks, if you do get this more than six, they will be a, a nice addition to any layout and to any uh, rolling stock fleet um, because they're coal cars and coal cars don't have the most amount of detail and if you are running them on your layout there's not much that you're going to see um, that you would see if they were passing by maybe except for the roller bearing caps if you got them at the right angle um, so aside from that um, I figure $20 is probably the best price that they could offer this at I mean I'd like to see these down or maybe around 15 for what you're actually getting um, but I don't think they're going to do that. That would probably be the sweet spot for price um, for a car like this. But at twenty bucks, um, it's not that bad. Um, so I would say definitely, if you have the funds available and you're able, I know in this climate that we're in now, money is, has been getting tighter and more scarce for a lot of people. So um, at this price point, get a couple if you can. Um, they're going to be a good addition to your layout to your fleet. I do like the cars because I don't have really any coal equipment. I, I have a couple, four or five packs of CSX cars um, that have been the prominence, dominance of the fleet of coal cars that I've had. But outside of that, I don't think I have really much uh, any of them. So one day, whenever they do their, their second run, I'm probably going to pick up a lot more BN cars, probably get about another 20 um, to solidify my, my coal uh, fleet. I probably have one or two coal trains. One is an empty, one is a, a loaded up coal, um, and then a bunch of other random cars that will find themselves in uh, junk trains and so manifest trains or whatever have you. So, with all that being said, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Um, if you haven't already, I know I've been away for a little while. That's going to be another video for another day. Um, I have been sharing some sneak peeks there on my Instagram, which I will post here at the end. Um, if you want to see what's going on there, um, you'll be interested because I'm going to have a lot more content coming on that here pretty soon. So, all that being said, this is me, your boy, Flash Jones. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you in the next one.